Okay, let's go ahead and continue our discussion on probability. So we started off uh, with our first video with going through some steps in order so that we could get to this point where the probability of an event is equal to the number of outcomes in the event that we're interested in divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. So I use some new symbols here. I use the double lines. If you see that, it just means the number of outcomes within that specific event. Okay, so our events can actually get to be some pretty complex, um, it can be pretty complex things. Um, it also can be combinate. We can also find the probabilities of combinations of events, and that's where we're going to start next. So over here, I'm going to go ahead and draw up our probability space. And we're going to continue using our dice example uh, just for a little bit. Okay, so let's still write up here our outcomes. So that is, those are all of our possible outcomes in our sample space. Now we had event A was our first event that we we're interested in. So we'll have this guy be green. Event A, and we said those were our evens, and we had that be equal to two, four, and six. So let's go ahead and circle those guys. Something like that. So that would be our event A. Now let's introduce another event. Let's say that we also have an event B. We'll have event B be blue. So event B, this guy, we're just going to say that this is less than 3. So any number that's less than 3. And we could have this one just be 1 and 2. Okay, so from there, if we highlight our 1 and 2, we can just highlight 1 and 2 and bring it on down. Okay, so the next one that I want to introduce from here is we have what's called the probability of A intersect, that's what that weird little N thing looks like, intersect B. And I want to write this one out as a definition. This one is number of outcomes in A and B divided by number of outcomes in our sample space. Okay, so if we take a look at this, we can actually find a answer to this question. So let's kind of combine these guys together and we'll say what's the probability of A intersect B? And so if we look over here, we can say, okay, how many outcomes are found in both A and B? And we notice that it's just the number two. It's the only one that's circled by both B and circled by A. You can also see it from the event spaces up here. We see that two is found in both of these guys. There's that overlap. So we had, there is one number that overlaps both of them divided by the number in our sample space, which is the number six. Now if I would just ask you what's the probability of rolling the number two on a six-sided dice, uh, that's really easy. It's one divided by six. And that's exactly kind of what we have done. We found that there was just the number two that was overlapping between A and B, and therefore we get this one six. So that's kind of how you handle this concept of an intersection. Now there's, there's an interesting thing with intersections. Uh, where we have what's called something that's called mutually exclusive. So two events are mutually exclusive if they don't have any, uh, any outcomes that overlap. So let's introduce outcome, or not outcome, but we'll introduce event C, and we'll say that C is equal to 3 and 5. 
So let me just kind of circle this guy with orange. Okay, I know it's getting a little crowded over there, but kind of bear with me. All right, so we've got A, which is kind of the big one with the evens. B is in the box with just one and two. And then C is our diagonal that's containing three and five. Okay, so we, we could say that events A and events C are mutually exclusive because they don't have any overlapping outcomes. So let's kind of write that, I don't know, we'll write that over here. We'll have a kind of like a definition and we'll put mutually exclusive And we'll say, in order for events to be mutually exclusive, we'll say that events have no overlapping outcomes. So we can just double check if, the, if our events don't have any overlap between them, uh, then they can be considered uh, mutually exclusive from one another, which is kind of handy. Uh, we know then that you know, the probability that two mutually exclusive events happen at the same time is going to be zero. And let's put it up here real quick. We can say like the probability of A intersect C is equal to 0 divided by 6. So those ones would be considered mutually exclusive events. All right, so we've covered now just the probability of a single event. We've covered the probability of when we two events intersect one another. And what we call it if two events don't intersect one another, that's called mutually exclusive. So we've got two more things that I want to cover. We also have what's called a union. So this is going to be, what is the probability of A union B? And it actually, we can write this one out in the equation. This equals the probability of A plus the probability of B. And then we're going to subtract from it the probability of A intersect Okay, let's kind of walk through this, see exactly what it means, uh, and then we can, we can kind of apply it over here. All right, so A union B. Union, another way that, that we talk about this little symbol is this is also the word or. And similarly, up here we can change this word intersect into the word and. Okay, so basically here we're wanting to see what's the probability if I were to roll a dice that either A or B would occur. So what we're going to do here is we're going to figure out, okay, first of all, what's the probability of A? Well, I knew that the probability of A was how many events were in A, 3 divided by 6 uh, would give us the probability of A. Now similarly, the probability of B, we can go back to this guy, number of events in B, 2 divided by the sample space of 6. So now we've got 3 6, we've got 2 6, and then we have to subtract off this intersection. And we say, okay, where, how many are we intersected by? And there is a 1 divided by 6 there, and then we'd be able to get our union. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if we, in fact, did the probability of A union B, that would equal 3 6 minus or plus 2 6 and minus 1 6 and that would give us 4 6. And you might ask yourself, okay, why did, again did we subtract off that 1 6? Well, let's think about it. What happened is that we actually double counted this 2. The 3, 6 from the 2, 4, 6, and the 2, 6 from the 
one and two, that two got accounted for twice. And remember, we're only gonna roll this dice once. We wanna say, what's the probability that we roll either an even or a less than two, or less than three? And the total number of outcomes there really is this four out of six. So that's how we handle this idea of a union. Now, if two events don't have any overlap, let's say, what's the probability of B union C? Then when we subtract off the intersect, notice there is no intersect between B and C. So the probability, remember they're mutually exclusive. If things are mutually exclusive, then the probability of their intersection occurring is zero. So that would drop out and then it's just the probability of A plus the probability of B. Okay, so we've got one last concept that I want to include in this video. And I'm going to erase some of our lines here because it's going to help me. So bear with me just a second. It shouldn't take me but a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to introduce the idea of a complement. So for this one, I'm going to highlight once again our event B, which is 1 and 2. Right, so the last thing that, that we are doing today is what is the probability of a complement. All right, and you're like, I have no idea what a complement means. Well, let's let's talk about what a complement is. And, and the, so A is here just because it's a generic term. We're actually going to use B up here. Um, don't get too confused with that. All right, so let's come up here and let's look at our B, and let's figure out what is the complement of B. So whenever we say complement, all that means is that we are going to be looking at everything that is not B. So if B is 1 and 2, then B complement is going to be equal to 3, 4, 5, and 6, where we can just basically circle everything that is not considered B. So that's what B complement is. It's just everything that B isn't. So when we come down here and look at just generically what's this probability, it's going to be the probability of 1, 100%, minus what the probability of A is. So if we look at, if we apply this to our B over here, let's do it real quick. Let's do orange. We'll do what is the probability of B complement. Well, that would be equal to, let's do it from the scenario of B, would be doing 1 minus, we've got 2 sixths up here, 2 divided by 6, and that would give us 4 divided by 6 is the probability of B complement. Now, we also figured out what B complement was, and we could count those, and hey, there's 4, and yep, it matches up with 4 divided by 6. So complements are very, very useful. We will be using them a lot. And when we understand what complements are, it helps us do a lot of manipulation because we can use this to our advantage, uh, especially here in the weeks to come.